first, um, one of our colleagues, Professor Dr. Tahar Ahmed, uh, to talk about the, I mean, uh, it's his uh, uh, presentation. Uh, no student left behind in remote area does like Uzbekistan with less or no internet connectivity in pandemic COVID-19. Obviously, this had been, uh, I mean, one of the challenges we faced, especially in the higher education sector, and I mean, in the higher education sector, uh, uh, particularly and in higher education sector uh, 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 in particular, uh, where the faculty and students were challenged by the digital divide uh, and, uh, I mean, availability or even no availability of internet resources or the gadgets required to connect with these online resources. So we, I, uh, we would be really looking forward to uh, his valuable thoughts and comments on this topic. Professor Dr. Tafari Amasa. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, I am very thankful to Shinwari Saab and the organizer for, organizer for organizing such a wonderful activity. Uh, today, my In the state to remove the connected the in this challenge and then what we have seen, what we have observed. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that. And then I'm going to also talk about that, what, that, what happened, how we cope with the situation. So, Patty, can you go to the second uh, thing? COVID-19 is one of the biggest challenges for humanity in the present era, which has severely affected human lives and human activities across the globe. Out of all sectors, education has been affected the most by COVID-19. The other activity, uh, with the, with so many other things like formal practice to keep people to go, the teachers have to go to school, the students have to go to school, have to go to this there, this is the best of research. So, the problem like in these things, in higher education, the people there that's the most. Next please. Coping with the situation was difficult in the day to do. So when, when this problem was faced by the world, not for the nation, this was the whole world. This was that the whole world developing world, the new world, how to put these things and with these problems. However, good resources provide a better opportunity to the developed world to handle the situation better than the developing world. So, the developing world has problems. Still, we are having problems. And that's why the demon suffered, but again, they, they knew how to handle with the new situation. So, even in the crisis, they, they did some good. But in those crises, the developing world, everything that was just fruit. Next, please. A response to COVID. In Pakistan and other developing countries like Pakistan is not the same in urban and rural areas and hence a uniform solution uh, 
put her matches on issue. This is the main problem. That I was in the US. So, but in the US, you are in a small town, you are in a big town, you are in a big You would have added the most specific kind of issue. If you go, who would be the resource and update? So, resource is different, opportunity is different, then the thing is different. So any at one point in life for me, I'm talking human instinct is a good example to respond. Like I talked about the internet connectivity in the legal space, but for us, it's the it was and it is still in the good distribution because in some some of a we don't have connectivity. In some areas, connectivity is very bad. It's very bad. Uh, here, this and uh, this slide, the Roman University student population. Next, please. Hello, Roman University student population. I think you are going faster than me. Sir, Can you go back? Please, can you go back, please? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you, can you go back to the slide, Roman University student population? Roman University student population. Can you go back? Back yeah, one more. On screen. Yes, this one. This one. This one. So here, like uh, when we talk about Roman people, was that is a kind of uh, our neighbor. This is an example for us. So let's talk about the student population at home was. Home was as the So we have a huge And then we come to the people from the rural areas of there is Manhattan, South Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan, Ijihan, Lekki, and all those rural areas. Next, please. Next, please. Now, if you see the urban areas, the urban areas, can you go back? I think you are, there is some problem in centralization. Uh, anyway, uh, one, one way, can you go one way? Yeah, maybe one way. One slide away. You can show one slide away. So now let's talk about the urban areas. The urban areas are not just like the rural world, but now if we talk about the rural areas, the rural areas like Wajiristan, like Lekki, like Bakkar, like some areas of Delice Balkan, there is almost no connectivity, and the connectivity is very poor. So, so how can we teach online in this situation? We have urban areas, and those urban areas, they have good connectivity, they have internet, they have facilities. The majority of students are coming from rural areas with no connectivity at all. So now, our university it was in a really in a big job. What to do? So we came up with an idea. Next, please. Next, please. Okay. Treating students of rural, rural, and urban with the same yardstick 
in the online teaching is not just and not fair. And the solutions like the one I talked about was very difficult for us to teach online and teach classes. So for us it was a very tough situation and we came up with a solution. Let's do it. Let's look. Mr. Professor, can I request you to please uh, um, and give your recommendations in a minute or so, maybe, please? Okay, we'll go back to that. Okay, so in, in, in this situation, then what we did, well, in model, there was no university student left behind in remote areas with less or no internet activity in that. Excuse me. Next please. The, the main features of the model was each course should be based on a textbook of students. Lectures be posted and portal so that any time in the week or two a student can visit place of connectivity and download and videos, lectures and notes, etc. So book, it was based. And the second thing was that every faculty member will post everything online on a portal. So anytime the student get opportunity, they go and get and put all the lectures and everything. And what happened? And the last thing was is the incidental system of assignments and the amendment of the sessions. So we Playing just one final exam. And that final exam, it was basically physical. And in that physical exam, exam we divided students by the first year student would come uh, in the week, they would exam the second, second year and four, four year. And then all these, each year student, they would come and they would give exam at different time. Next, please. So with this, this was the first online teaching in Pakistan. Like Roman University was the first started online teaching in Pakistan, although it is located in one of the most remote areas. But what we did in that kind of situation, like the days uh, it was a challenge, and we converted the days of challenge into opportunity, and we switched. To, to, to the digital world. So Roman University was the first and here is the conclusion. Challenge can be transformed into opportunity and then in fact globally people are willing to work even in the most remote areas of the world. So like working in Waziristan, working in Baghdad, working in Vieta and starting online courses even before ATC. This was a kind that uh, I would say that this was a very success story. And in another, this success story, we just found the challenge of, of the head day and the opportunity. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Professor Ekhwasa. Uh, um, a unique experience, obviously, and I can relate to uh, this whole discussion to the university as well, uh, because I my university I mean, has registration from all across Pakistan, and I can imagine the level of challenges one institution might have faced uh, while enabling the students to access online resources and uh, enabling the faculty members to deliver lectures in an online mode. Uh, uh, thank you very much for.